That's exactly what we are here for. Because of Joshua and the battle in Jericho, look at the size of the town. It is less than two acres in size. It's five denims actually. But in reality, we are standing here at a man-made hill. It's an accumulation of destruction. All of this is a man-made. There is nothing like, you know, it's not natural, so to speak. And, you know, we can say that the, uh, the professional dig was done by Kathleen Kenyon in that pit right there. She have really excavated and studied the layers layer after layer. From her discoveries and all the arguments and the debates that came after by different scholars, we all accept the idea that saying that the early urban settlers, they became food producers, they learned it here in Jericho. There is a spring of water come from the ground and it irrigates Jericho. And that was, that was the spring that we attracted these early settlers 9,650 BC, almost 12,000 years ago. That's where they start to produce food. That is also where they found the first time in the human history the pottery material. Because of this Dead Sea water that dried, left behind this pottery. So what we call this period, we call it in, in archaeological terms, Neolithic period, the new period. The new period of settlement, urban settlement. And you know, they have suffered from disasters. Mm -hmm. And these disasters were the sudden floods that came from the mountains, washed their settlement away. So they learned 10,000 years ago how to overcome this problem. They surrounded their village with a solid stone built wall as a base and then the extra water that came from the flood, it was called in a round tower, which in the beginning they thought it's the water, you know, observation tower of an army. No, it was a water tower. So you're looking at the oldest structure in the world in that bit. When we always think that the oldest structure in the world is the pyramids in, G in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now this predates them, 3,000 years older in that pit. It's something unique that even with that mentality back then, they knew exactly how to you know, protect their settlements from floods, from natural disasters, <coughs> 10,000 years ago. This is always there is first for Jericho. It is the first place where people start to be food producers. It is the first place on earth where they learn the value of one clan system surrounding their, themselves with walls. It's the first town on earth, first place on earth, where we have in history evidence that there is a structure that dates back to that long period of time. Now what causes this, this accumulation of debris is the invasion that came clan after clan, clan after clan, until the period brings us up to the time of Abraham, because that's what we have here. Most of these, like the stripes in the pit, they see them, these walls of cities that goes back even to uh, 200 years before Abraham, 4,000 years ago. But you know, the, the question would remain, what happens to Joshua's wall? Who are the clan who came to settle here at the time of Joshua? When we talk about the time of Joshua, we are referring to the time of the late bronze, early iron. So we have a settlement of a stronghold, a fortress, on the stell that goes back to 5,000 years ago, 3,000 BC, at the time of this international trade, at the time of these cultures, where we could see at junctions of roads, we have lots, <coughs> lots of strongholds and settlements to trade. This community in the middle of the desert came to settle here because the Egyptians, as they were traveling via this area to go to Damascus to trade with their gold, they stopped by the Dead Sea, to, by the Jericho, to buy from the Dead Sea area the most important materials, which is salt and what, what Deacon have put in his face. Yeah, they used it as as a protection for the mummification coffins. They bought it from these people. Back then, it has salt in it, and it can be used for mummification. They've used that material even, even from here. So this clan that settled at that period of time, they were known as the moon worshippers. That's where the name Jericho comes from. Jericho comes from your moons, yes. Yeah, Jericho comes from the word Yarayah. Yarayah means a moon, so they were moon worshippers. But where was Jericho at the time of Christ? We have passed through modern Jericho, and we have really 
it, we talked about the ancient Jericho where we're standing. Where is Jericho at the time of Christ? Jericho at the time of Christ was totally away from here. It was look with me here, please watch. Here and Jericho with Jesus, it would be there. That is where the Blessed Mother and Saint Joseph have lost Jesus. They discovered that they lost Jesus. And that area at the beginning of the public ministry, the Lord have never went to temptation over there. He was far away from that city. He came in the wilderness alone to pray. But from that area, when he passed by Jericho, you have to imagine the crowds would touch his cloak to be cured. He cured the blind. He have helped. They died at Zacchaeus streets, all there in that area. And from that place, they pulled the palm branches and followed Jesus all the way to Jerusalem. That is the beginning of the palm procession. Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives, was the city limit where Jesus said, Stop, guys, give me a donkey. I don't want to be regarded as a king. I'm coming down as a prince of peace. So he rode on a donkey to have, you know, an old, any idea that he's, he's a warrior coming to the city. But that would be Jericho when we talk about Jesus' time. Now, if you look at these, all these green fields, it's irrigated by this spring. But that would be the spring mentioned in the second book of King. There is where Elisha came, second book of Kings chapter 4. He was passing by the disciples and the water was his disciples, the water was bitter. So he took a handful of salt and dumped it into the source of the water that became sweet. It talks about that spring. That's why we call it biblical name with a biblical name, Elisha spring. Yes. Now, the amount of temptation is something to really look at it. Yes, all books they say that by tradition, the temptation took place right here. The Byzantines refer to this mountain being the Mount of Temptation, and so as the Crusaders, they built monasteries on the top. You see so many caves over there? Mm -hmm. there were, the Romans used it as burials. And you know, the Byzantines removed the tombs and used them as cells to live in them, as monks. And they built a monastery, you can see the white color monastery with the three domes, you see? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that is built by the Greek Orthodox in 1892, on the remains of the Crusaders. In the Byzantine period, they had two. They had one down and one on the very top. Because there were two temptations in the, in the wilderness. And from the Crusader time, we call this mountain La Monte, La Monte de Caronte of the 40 days. So 40 days versus the 40 days of Moses on the mountain. 40 days of temptation after, after coming through River Jordan. So this is where it's coinciding, and we can't say yes by tradition, but it is acceptable location if we want to compare it with the Tal here and River Jordan, because that will be the baptismal area. Okay, it's your time to take the photos around. See the, all the structure in the world in that pitch. And we can hit our way down. There's holes in them. You cannot grind anything. There's a hole. In some, some are not. It's amazing how they make them, though. And these were made to put in the center of the, of the room, put a wooden bean in it to hold the roof. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. And that would be the microwave. <laughs> I'm, referring, I'm referring to the time of the Middle Bronze. That's the period of our Grandma Sarah, when she was cooking for the angels. By the way, the oldest recipe in the world for food is also in the book of Genesis, chapter 18. Milk and goat meat and rice. It's, uh, you know, it's amazing. Now look at the, uh, the ashes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's from a battle. Oh. They burned the city. And the walls would be burned because the mud bricks, they contained hay in them. They burned it. So this city was destroyed. Another one was built on top of it. You can see the walls on the top. So you can understand that all the houses were by the city walls. They built them exactly by the city walls, all the houses. So those from the house can fight back. And you know, yes, this, uh, the spies were drawn down. If you read the, uh, the Bible, the spies of Joshua were drawn down from the window, from the walls down. Does that give you an idea how that happens? So these are mouthbreaks of the Middle Bronze period, actually like 2000 BC. 
12,000 years ago. Now, when that was destroyed, when you destroy a city and level it up and build another one, level it up and build another one, it becomes like a pyramid, like a cone. What if you need a bigger space on the top? What do you do? So what they did is, back then they were still, again, smart. 200 years later, 150 years later, when that city was destroyed, they came and built around the town, a retaining wall, filled it with dirt, and made the site of the city bigger, so they can have more army. And that's what I'm going to show you down there. So that, you can see the limit of the city up to this small point. The walls, yeah? And then from that walls all the way down, it was that fill to make the area bigger. You got it? Mm -hmm. You got it, Mike? Yes, sir. One dollar. <laughs>